This is a second lesson in a lecture series titled An Introduction to Digital Circuits. And in this lesson we will be introducing what will be known as the static discipline. Just as a quick review from last week, we introduced some new ideas in our course. And the, firstly, we uh, introduced the idea of processing information, uh, which led to the idea of an electric signal a voltage or current that contained information embedded in it. We looked at the example of a temperature sensor who put out an, uh, an analog voltage that was proportional to the temperature that which it measure, measured and found that in a real system when that analog signal was transmitted at a distance or in a noisy environment that the received signal over here would have noise added to it and when that signal was interpreted as a temperature using the, um, the scale that was known for the sensor, the controller or receiver would misinterpret uh, the actual temperature in the room. In other words, the information was corrupted or distorted. To get around this, uh, we considered the idea of lumping values together. Rather than using a full range of uh, analog voltages from 0, say, to 10 volts, we decided to just use two values. One was at around 5 volts, one was around 0 volts. And instead of encoding information in the amplitude of the signal, we uh, proposed to encode information in time. And in the simple scheme we proposed was just to put out pulses. So one pulse per degree or one pulse per tenth of a degree and then some rest, some dead time, before you'd start that sequence again. And every time you, you did that, uh, the receiver, if it was counting pulses, could, uh, would know what the, the uh, temperature was. And in this scheme, adding noise onto our signal um, as it was received would not uh, corrupt the information so long as that noise was uh, within some noise margin that we have yet to define. We considered the idea that if the receiver had was able to distinguish any voltage above 2.5 volts from any voltage below 2.5 volts, then in principle, as long as the receiver re received a signal that was anywhere from 2.5, like 2.51 volts, up to 5 volts, it would interpret that as high, and any any signal 2.49 volts and below, down to zero volts, would be considered a low signal. And if that could be achieved, then we would actually have this noise margin or noise tolerance of about two and a half volts, meaning that we could add as much as two and a half volts or nearly two and a half volts to the signal in the form of noise uh, without actually uh, losing the information. Now, the interesting thing is once you add more noise than that, then you very quickly lose all the information. But until that point, you lose none of it. Now we want to develop the idea of the static discipline. And we're going to launch off from where we left last time, which was that the sender would send a 0 volt or a 5 volt uh, level signal. And the receiver, could if it could distinguish anything above 2.5 volts from anything below 2.5 volts, then it would be immune to a significant amount of noise. Specifically, it would be immune to any to noise that spanned up to two and a half volts between the high level and the two and a half volt threshold. And it would also have immunity of another two and a half volts between the two and a half volt threshold and the low value of zero. We can depict that in this diagram here, where on the left we have the sender, Vs, so this is sender, and on the right we have the receiver. So the horizontal axis uh, has no significance, no time, it's just showing visually uh, what the noise margin is. So this span right here we define as nm high, noise margin high, and this span here we define as nm low. So this is the upper or high noise margin, as we'll see in general, the high and the low 
may not be the same. And nm low is the low noise margin. And in both cases here, the noise margin is equal to 2.5 volts. So it's 5 volts minus 2.5 is 2.5 volts. And for noise margin low, it is 2.5 volts minus 0 volts. Okay, 2.5 volts. Now, this works, this is great if the receiver can actually produce we can produce a receiver that uh, can distinguish between anything that's just a, a hair above two and a half volts from anything that's a hair below two and a half volts. But in principle, that shouldn't be absolutely necessary. It's going to be a challenge to design a circuit that can distinguish, say, some a, a signal that is a nanovolt or a microvolt above two and a half versus a signal that is that much below it. So we want to relax this requirement a little bit to make it easier to design the receiver. And so we'll, we'll define two levels here. We're going to call this, we'll say this is 3 volts, and this is 2 volts. And it'll be labeled VI high and VI low, VIH, VIL. I is for input. So on the receiving side, the signal is actually uh, going into an input. So we call it I. Now the noise margin will be reduced, but the advantage is that the receiver is more uh, designable, is more, it's, it's an easier design to implement. So we have a noise margin now that's going to be 5 volts minus VI high, which will be 2 volts in this case. And the lower noise margin is going to be 2 volts minus 0 volts. So we've sacrificed some noise margin, but at the benefit that our receiver uh, doesn't have to be so high performing. We can consider the same thing at the sender side. So currently we're assuming that the sender can send exactly 5 volts and exactly 0 volts. But is that really necessary? What if instead we had the sender send a voltage that was at least some voltage V O H V O high, okay, V out high, Let's say that's four volts. And at least uh, when it was transmitting a low, it would be a voltage that would be at least as low as a V O low, but it could be lower than that. And now we have a further reduced noise margin. The noise margin now is V O high minus V I high and the lower noise margin is going to be the negative of V O low minus V I low. These will turn out to be 1 volt in this case. So it will be 4 minus 3 is equal to 1 and uh, 1 minus 2, the negative of that, 1 volt. Let's look at one last uh, representation of this here. So the diagram on the top left here is the same as what I've just drawn. And uh, then on the right, I've actually plotted some signals versus, versus time. So the, the top one, the sender, uh, I'm showing the VO high and VO low threshold, so that'd be 4 volts and 1 volt. And the blue trace is the uh, the sender, the, the sender signal V S. And we see that as long as when it's trying to send a high, as long as it sends something that is at least V O high, uh, but it could be as much, it could be higher to any degree, it could go way up here, and that would be totally fine. And when it's trying to send a low, it has to be at least below one volt, but it could go down as low as it wanted to. As long as that happens, then we're complying with our quote unquote static discipline. On the receiver side, we've uh, shown the, the VI high of um, 3 volts and VI low of 2 volts. And so any signal that is going to be above the VI high, the 3 volts, will be interpreted as logic high. And any signal that will be below VI low of 2 volts will be considered logic uh, 
zero. And so we see here that the, the highs and lows are recovered because in this case, those noise, the, the noisy signal as it's received does not cross into this no man's land here. Okay, so this is, we'll call no man's land. And similarly, for the transmitter, the no man's land is, is here. Okay, so this is sender no man's land. I guess the other one is the receiver's no man land. You might ask, well, what happens if a signal does end up in that voltage range? Well, if the sender sends some signal, well, first of all, the sender is not designed to always put out a high that's at least VO high and a low that's at least at maximally VO low, then we would say it doesn't comply with the static discipline and it doesn't get to play. Okay, it doesn't follow the rules, so it's not going to uh, play in this particular system. But if the sender does comply with that, but yet through the system design or through external noise, the signal that is actually received actually has a signal that falls within the no man's land, then the receiver is not responsible for how it interprets that logic level. It, it will, in, based on the particular design of the receiver, if it receives a voltage between 2 and 3 volts, it will interpret that voltage and say it's either high or low, but it can decide to do that however it wants. And the idea is that you never design the system so that signals are, are received in that voltage range, but if they are, uh, the receiver is free to interpret it however they will. They're not held to any standard there. So in conclusion, we say so systems or circuits that adhere to the VO high slash VO low for their digital outputs, the senders, and VI high slash VI low for their digital inputs or receivers are said to obey the static discipline. And when you adhere to the static discipline, you ensure the following noise margins. A uh, noise margin high of VO high minus VI high and a noise margin low of VI low minus VO low.